Hello, ATX viewers. It's just me, Rollercoaster, by myself. So Gemma is currently grabbing the rental code for the team that she's going to be using, and then we're going to move on to our match with Rozzy. Gemma is going to be using Joe UX9's uh, Players' Cup slash Streamers' Cup team. If you've been looking at the beer, you may have seen this at the top of the ladder. It's really, really strong. It's super brutal. It is Incineroar, Excadrill, Tyranitar, Dragapult, Togekiss, and Amoongus. It's kind of strange. It has, like three fighting weeks, but also three fighting resist. Well, two resist and one immunity. Oh, thanks for the follow. Um, oh, what's up, man? Yeah. Um, so it's a really cool team. It's super brutal. And it requires like, a, it has a lot of cool like positioning stuff and like setup things. I really like it a lot. If you ever want to try it out, uh, Joe UX9 has the, uh, the rental code, I believe, pinned on his Twitter. So just go check that out. Plug for a total stranger who's not a part of this. Um, I do not know what Rozzy is going to be using, and we'll find out later, but yeah, it should be some good stuff either way. Ooh. How about that Pokemon? Uh, oh yeah, Rozzy did send me his team. I am now all of a sudden remembering. Do, do, do. Let me see, I just need to look up... I'm going to assume that Jim is going to mentally tune this out as I say this, in case she can hear me. Rozzy has... Oh my god, that's right. Oh, okay. Actually, I'm super excited to see how this goes. Rozzy has Conkelder, Clefairy, Poltergeist, Urshifu, Ndidi, and Snorlax. That is something that I'm super excited to see. As I mentioned, Gemma has three fighting resistance. She does not like fighting. I mean, there is Togekiss and there is Dragapult and there is Amu Amoongus, but still, like, fighting types are a problem for, like, one of your main support mons and one of your two main supers. So having both Urshifu, especially if that's Urshifu Dark, is going to be a problem. Urshifu Dark with Clefairy, oh, it's going to be some good stuff. I am looking forward to it. Uh, it looks like they are getting ready to pair up with each other right now. Um, also, in DDF and Snorlax makes me potential think that it could be a return of the Belly Drum set. That kind of like waxes and wanes in and out. It, it's, it's conditionally good. It, if you have no answers to it, it can really get out of hand fast. Like trying to KO a 500 HP Dynamax Snorlax with plus six attack is a problem. Okay, looks like the searching has begun gun and they should find each other any moment now i'm man i really hope that's a darker shifu let me look at the team list again there's no what i mean you have a ghost so you might want to have that dark type switch in. there seems to be no like fire or water or grass so very interesting stuff okay sweet they found each other and we're about to get started Again, this is just me talking into the void, so, you know, it's going to be a little weird. Deciding the rules, a classic part of the game, as we all know. I'm just going to be going crazy here for a little bit. <laughs> uh, appropriately titled Ultimate. So if you ever see this team and you think, what do I do to stop it? This team is physically incapable of beating Corviknight. It cannot happen. It only has Flare Blitz on Incineroar. Lumberry Corviknight, it cannot get rid of. All right, so as I mentioned, gemma has got Excadrill, Tyranitar, Togekiss, Dragapult, Incineroar, and Amoongus. Razi has Conkelder, uh, Clefairy, Poltegeist, Urshifu, Ndidi, and Snorlax. Weirdly enough, I think Razi has like a solid team matchup against this. Um, Maybe Rozzy has secretly been trying to counter-team the, like, top of the ladder. Commentary in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, Cor Corv is solid. Like, it's... I really want to use it, but, like, that bulk up Corv just destroys Sand. It's so hard for it to deal with once you get just, like, one defense boost. You have to rely on, like, crits and flinches over and over and over again. All right, Gemma has locked in her four. Rozzy looks like he's still selecting what he's going to go with. I, if that's a darker Shifu, 
I'm honestly putting the the matchup in Rosie's favor. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm super excited either way. I I think for Jim, a Togekiss is probably going to be a really really big piece, so you're definitely going to want in this. All right, the match is starting. Let's see what our trainers have gone with. Yeah, yeah. I've seen Corv like basically work like how Ferrothorn works, but more aggressive. Okay, indeed, Pulte guys. Interesting lead. Okay, it's been a while since I've seen someone use. Okay, an Excadrill and Togekiss. Okay, both going with their redirection. Both going with potential sweepers. I don't really know that much about Pulte guys. I haven't seen it in a while, but I do know that um, weakness policy and um, oh, what's that ability called? Um, the one that like it lowers your defenses but raises your speed. That was. Uh, Weak armor, yes, that's what it was. I remember that all on my own. No one told me. And um, it's, I don't think that Ndidi gets any ghost type moves though. So I don't know if that's gonna be a strategy that Rozzy has that he can do. Um, you know, Max Phantasm could come out, that could be cool. Um, Ndidi just going for protect, very interesting. Not too afraid of any pressure. Togek is going for follow me, potentially trying to get a sword stand up, sword stance up with that Excadrill. Uh, yep, that is exactly what happens. What does Pulte guys choose to go for? A setup move of its own? Hmm. Shell smash. Yes! I love it immediately. This is great. Okay, so we got Shell Smash Poltegeist ready to go. If Gemma has something like that Tyranitar in the back. Oh, and it's White Herb too. That's amazing. Okay, so no defense drops from the Poltergeist. Uh, I don't think it has like the best bulk in general though. So like a plus two move from Excadrill is still going to hurt if it gets the hit. I've, I'm Rousey. I'm probably just going to go for a follow me and maybe like a Phantasm into the Excadrill or something like that. Gemma probably wants to do something like switch in Tyranitar, get the speed back in their favor. Um because you don't want that uh, Poltergeist just like hitting you out immediately as hard as it can. So let's see, yeah, Togekiss is going to switch out. Tyranitar is probably coming in. Yep, that is Tyranitar setting up the Sand Stream. Excadrill's Sand Rush that's going to be going double speed this turn. Um, is a Dynamax going to come out from either player? Yep, Jim is going to choose Dynamax. Excadrill um, I don't, it can choose to Steel Spike or Quake, depending on what Jimma thinks the Poltergeist attack is based. I'm pretty sure it's a special attacker, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. I assume that Rozzy just wants to do something simple, like a Follow Me and Phantasm. Ooh, okay. No Dynamax this turn. Is Rozzy going to Shell Smash again? Okay, so... Quake gonna get the nice special defense boost on that Excadrill is really solid. Ooh, that is a one hit KO on Indeedy. Tough. Yeah, so Rozzy has lost one of his redirectors, but Rozzy has Clefairy in the back, so this could be double redirection. Let's see what Baton Pass! Oh my god! That's brilliant! Is this gonna go to Conkluder or, or Shifu? Oh my god, I just got so psyched for that. That's amazing. Okay, who is Poltegeist going into? Is it Snorlax? It's Urshifu. Okay, is it Water or Dark Urshifu? Water Urshifu! Oh, that's such a problem! Okay, so Excadrill Sand Rush has increased its speed to plus two. However, with the Shell Smash, Urshifu now has the exact same speed boost. So the speed order has been returned to order, making Urshifu the fastest thing on the field. Um, Gemma can try to max guard with the Excadrill, but Urshifu could either uh, G-Max Surging Strikes, I don't remember, the G-Max Rapid Flow, that's what it's called, and you cannot protect against it. It is just going to hit, or Gemma could just go for a max knuckle into the Tyranitar, get a night another attack boost that seems a bit risky um surging strikes could also just go into the excadrill it doesn't have any defense boost it's going to hit multiple times break any potential pass it cannot survive Gemma is under an insane amount of pressure right now okay Ooh, sorry if i'm talking too fast or overhyped but i just thought that was the coolest play 
Yeah, Urshifu plus two. This is problematic to say the least. Okay, Tokus is gonna switch in for Tyranitar. So if there's a Max Knuckle, uh, it should be fun. Ooh, close combat into the Excadrill. Not even gonna Dynamax. That is a clean one hit KO. Ooh, that is brutal. So Jebba's Dynamax is now off the board. Um, we know the Tyranitar is in the back. Oh, and it's Life Orb too. Rosie, that is overkill, my friend. <laughs> that is some damage output. Okay, so our Shifu, Dynamax is gone. That means Gemma cannot protect at all from any attack coming from this Urshifu. The Togekiss is going to be her most important piece to defeating this thing. Uh, both Tyranitar, uh, well, Tyranitar, I don't know what Gemma has in the back. None of us truly know. Um, Tyranitar is not, it just cannot survive anything that Urshifu does. Okay, so it is in Cinerar where you can get rid of one of those plus one attacks, but it is still plus one. Surging Strikes always crits. Gemma cannot protect. I think that what she has to hope for is that Urshifu either doesn't have Protect, um, won't Dynamax, or Rozzy just messes up on this turn. But so since Incineroar and Tyranitar are the other two Pokemon, I think that if Rozzy can just take care of this Togekiss, the game is over. Like, it is going to be really hard to get through this Urshifu, especially if it just chooses to Dynamax this turn. But let's see what the strategy is that these two players go for. <laughs> yeah, just not being able to protect from this thing. Oh, fake out. Oh, no. Oh, Psychic Terrain's up. Oh, my God. Surging Strikes. Who's this going into? Is it Togekiss? Is it Incineroar? I'm so excited for this thing. Oh, Incineroar. I love it. Okay, so that is two uh, of Gemma's mons down. However, because they didn't Dynamax and because Razi didn't target the Togekiss, that means that this Dazzling Gleam's gonna go out and probably get the KO. Yeah, or Shifu's special defense is really, really bad. So I'm not entirely sure how Poltegeist is gonna be able to pull this off. And oh my god, with another Shell Smash, that's how it's gonna pull this off. Oh, the anticipation, the thrill of the battle. I do believe that Incineroar is the wrong option, but Razi, I think, uh, has might have a game plan here. Um, so now, ooh, Concalder, yep, that. So I think, I think just a Max Phantasm into this Togekiss and a Drain Punch is gonna wrap up the game. To be honest, yeah, I think um, Poltegeist, I believe, has really really strong special attack but it seemed that Rozzy had this game pretty solidly on lockdown oh man what a couple of turns well let's see what happens still um and Rozzy still has a Dynamax so let's see who's Dynamax in this turn that's an Ultra Ball personally I would put Conkludor into an Ultra Ball and Poltegeist into a Dusk Ball but apparently me and Rozzy have different tastes Personally, I think this should just be a Max Phantasm into the Togekiss and a Drain Punch into the uh, Tyranitar, and that should be a good game right there, but we'll see what happens. Let's see. Conkluder going for Protect, potentially worried that uh, it's going to die to something that Togekiss can do. Max Phantasm, presumably that's going into the Togekiss. At plus two, that is a clean knockout. And at minus one defense, I don't know what item is on that uh, Conkluder, but I'm fairly confident that a Mach Punch is just gonna be able to take that thing out. Yeah, this has been a wild, wild ride. I am down for it. Yeah, so it looks like Razi's got a lot. Oh, okay, it's Guts, so that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, a Mach Punch is just gonna take care of this. Yeah, Tyranitar does not like the fighters. Good, good stuff from Razi. How do you predict the Shell Smash Baton Pass and then the Dynamax from Poltegeist after a second Shell Smash? Intense stuff. So, now we move on to game two. So, there's a lot of great information. 
it's not the dark type of Shifu, it is the water type of Shifu, which means Dragapult has a solid matchup against it. Uh, it doesn't really offer that much offensive pressure to it. However, there is a Poltegeist and the Ndidi making things a bit more complicated. Um, we also haven't seen anything that the Snorlax has done. Um, and, you know, Amoongus can always put in work. Yeah, it's a step above hyper offense. This is the transcendent mode of hyper offense, and I love it. Um, so, yeah, it depends on what Jim wants to go with this game. Uh, honestly, with that much fighting pressure, I don't know if you want Excadrill, Tyranitar, and Sonora. This team is very, very fighting weak. It's kind of designed to have like multiple pieces of it so that like the three things that are fighting weak have like solid switch-ins and support from Togekiss, Dragapult, and Moongus. But still, uh, it, it's not a guaranteed thing. Like, if you can just take out... Because it, you can only bring four mods, right? And if you can just take out the ones that aren't fighting weak, the ones that are fighting weak have a really big problem. That like it's a big water problem too. So you just have to like be able to manage the pieces that can deal with the fighters, and then you basically have the game on lockdown. I was trying this one team that had like weakness policy Dragapult and Urshifu, and if I just took Togekiss out of the factor, Urshifu just ran a field through the entire rest of the team. Okay, so we are moving on to game two. Let's see what adjustments our players make. And let's see what different things people are doing. My mouth is a little dry, but that's all good. It is indeed Snorlax. Let's go. I love it. Let's do it. I hope it's Belly Drum, Dragapult, and Togekiss. Okay, so Max Phantasm just is not on the table this turn. It's not happening. It can't happen. Don't tell me it can happen. It's not going to. But uh, you still got Max Wormwind. Dragapult's going to be the fastest thing on the field. Um, so it can start trying... If I, I'm assuming that it's Belly Trump Snorlax. I don't know that for certain. But if it is, it can start managing those attack boosts. Try to get them out as, as soon as possible. You're probably going to want to follow me with your Togekiss. Prevent any, any funny business from happening. But we'll see what goes down. Ooh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, indeed he goes for follow me. Tog Dragon Dance comes out from Dragapult. Gonna get a nice attack and speed boost, making it very, very threatening. And then Dazzling Gleam's gonna come out from Togekiss. Is it gonna get the crit? I don't think that's a crit on Snorlax, which is probably... The oh no, it is a crit on Snorlax. It just says Crazy Special Bolt. And there is the Belly Drum. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> Show the normies that you can, in fact, max Phantasm in front of two normal types. Let's do it. Make the reads. Okay, so here's the question. Do you Dynamax Snorlax? Do you just go for a facade? Do you go for a Darkest Lariat? What do you do here? Jimma is kind of like forced to either just Wormwind. I think Wormwind or Airstream, you could try to make like the most aggro play of possible be like, I think the Poltegeist is gonna come in and Phantasm one of these slots, but it's probably not gonna happen. All right, Incineroar is coming in, gonna get rid of one of those uh, attack boosts. So now instead of being plus six, it's plus five, much more manageable, right? If Rozzy called this and went for a max darkness, it is gonna be uh, a, a pretty big uphill battle from here. But like personally, I would just go for a max strike into the token kiss. All right, we see a Dynamax come out from that Dragapult. Uh, no, hasn't taken any damage. It's attack boosted. Dynamax also coming out. This is presumably the Snorlax or the sickest Ndidi I've ever seen in my life. So something that needs to happen uh, I believe the way GMAX Replenish works is the only way that you can recover your berry is that you, you immediately use the move after it has been consumed. So if Rozzy did not go for a GMAX Replenish, uh, it won't get its berry back this turn. Uh, follow me coming out from the Ndidi. Max Wormwind coming out. That is definitely going to KO the Ndidi. We saw that it wasn't Sash or anything like that. And even if it wasn't, got the Dazzling Gleam chip the first turn. 
I think Rozzy probably needed to read the Togekiss switching out uh, to have a solid chance here. Yeah, G-Max Replenish coming out into the what was the Togekiss is now an Incineroar. You're plus four still instead of plus six. It's going to take care of the job. You're fine. Don't even worry about six in TDS. <laughs> okay, so who do we got coming out next? Gemma does have a redirection option. It does have a boosted Dragon Bolt. Ooh, second redirection coming out. Oh, this is so hard now. Okay, so Gemma has to like get this turn right because you because both the mons on the field are immune to either or either of the stab moves from Dragapult. You phantasm the Clefairy and it protects, that's no bueno. You Wormwind the Snorlax and it redirects, that's no good. Some Clefairies even run Ally Switch, which is a whole other level. So you're basically like just forced to read an Ally Switch. Um, we also have to consider the speed. Oh, Helping Hand. Okay. I don't know if this is going to go. Okay, so Phantasm's going to take care of the Clefairy. Oh my god, it survived? That's insane. Oh. That just survived a plus one Phantasm. If this. G Max Replenish, okay, it is faster than Amoongus. There's a bit of speed on the Snorlax, it looks like. Amoongus goes down. Snorlax still has its berry. Oh man, this is some intense stuff. All right, so we're back in the situation that we were before. Yeah, I underestimate Clefairy heavily. It was a plus one life orb Dragapult. I thought I'd get the KO. Yeah. <laughs> so. Now it is a time for a turn of reads. Who do you attack? What do you do? You protect your Togekiss. You're risking a darkness going into your Dragapult. You follow me. Maybe you took the darkness. Maybe you uh, maybe you just get KO'd by a G-Max Replenish. On the other hand, what is uh, Rozzy going to do this turn? Follow me. Helping hand. Ally switch. Protect and sing? Who knows? It is madness on the field right now. Togekiss going for the follow me. All right. Worried about that Max Darkness coming out. Wants to deny it from happening. Second Max Phantasm. Clefairy didn't go for follow me. Dang. That could have been the end of Snorlax. It is minus two now. And Darkness or Replenish. What happened? What's going on? Quake! Oh no, Rozzy! Tragedy! Tragedy strikes! Oh, it's so sad. Okay, Poltergeist is in the back. Yeah. I it's that's a that was a risky move and it did not pay off. Okay. I believe Snorlax is minus two defense, and it's pretty low on HP. So I don't think it's going to take Dragon Darts very well. Then again, who knows? I I don't think Poltegeist can take a Protectant. Yeah, Dragon Darts coming out. Is this going to pick up the KO on Snorlax? Oh, he barely makes it and recovers with the berry. Okay, what happens next? I Dazzling Gleam shouldn't be able to KO. Oh, God, I just don't know anymore. This is so close. Okay. They both survive. Oh my god. If this is a strength sap. Oh my god. Okay. Show me the facade or the double edge or giga impact. That'd be sick. Um, What do you got here? Facade. Okay. Is that going to take care of Togekiss? Togekiss hangs on. Oh my god. I can't handle the stress. I'm sorry, Will. I'm invested. I'm so invested. But Dragon Darts this turn is going to KO Snorlax. I think you may have needed to go for a Shadow Ball that turn. It was a weak armor, so it didn't get any speed boost this turn. Uh, oh, man. If Rousey had just gone for that. We, we can't think of what could have been. We only have to deal with what is. Um, but 
So let's see. Snorlax just can't survive a Dragon Darts this turn. And I don't think Poltegeist is going to be able to take two Dragon Darts and a Phantasm. Or, and a Dazzling Gleam. Okay, so there's one Dragon Dart. I think you have to Shadow Ball. Yeah. Oh, you survived a bit better this turn. Dazzling Gleam comes out. It's single target now, so it's going to do way more damage. Yeah, Shadow Ball. Mm. If Poltegeist has Shadow Sneak? Potentially. Other than that, I don't think it's happening. Dazzling Gleam just seems like it should seal this up. I mean, if Poltegeist has like Sucker Punchers, yeah, yeah, Raji just canceled. Oh man, that was so close. Yeah, it. This is this is the kind of Pokemon that I love watching. Just banana stuff. Okay, so I think we've seen all the surprises this team has. Dragapult seemed to be the right call, although there were a couple of turns where it could have gone poorly for Gemma. The, the Max Quake was just kind of... I don't think it was the right call. I mean, like, like, you've seen Gemma play defensively with the Togekiss, so I don't super disagree with it, but it did... I mean, like, it obviously put you on the back foot. Rozzy tried to make a read. If Rozzy got the read right, I think it would have just put the game in his hands, but didn't, so you're left with a little bit more difficulties. So let's see how these players choose to switch it up. Jim checking some stats on that Amoongus, seeing how it's handling things. So does Rozzy go back to um, Poltegeist or stick with Snorlax? I think the Snorlax put in some solid work that game. It, it was getting KOs after KOs and it survived the Dragon Darts after like minus two defense. So if you can just deny Phantasms, I think you're good. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, Belly Drum Snorlax, if you do not have answers for it, you're just not ready. It just it just does too much. It's too it's too strong. Alright. Sorry, I have to check in between the chat and like the actual video source I'm getting, because like if I look at the stream, it's on delay. Okay, so it looks like we're going back to um, Shell Smash. Interesting. So What's going to happen here? Do you read that Dragapult isn't going to Phantasm this turn? Because last time... Um, oh, dang, that Intimidate eats up the White Herb. That is unfortunate. So, um, you have options here. You can either just Dragon Dance, go for a Max Worm win, uh, Flare Blitz, Burning Jealousy, as we just saw that that Incineroar has, make a switch, do whatever. I think we're going to see like a pretty passive turn from both players here. Um, they're probably just going to want to set up, get into a stronger position with their sweepers. If, personally, if I was Razi, I might try to go a little bit bold and just go for an expanding force if you got it. Oh, Ozzy's just Dynamaxing immediately. Interesting. Let's see what happens. I Again, assuming this is a Poltegeist, delicious, delicious tea. Uh, if we look at the Dynamax animation, we can see that it is not the authentic uh, Poltegeist with the stamp underneath the pot. That's something that you can get in game. It's very difficult, though. And Didi just going for a follow me. Uh, pretty safe. Don't want to get phantasmed. And let's see, Dragapult going for a Dragon Dance, gonna try and get set up here. Try to do some big, big damage. And Pulte, guys, I assume this is gonna be a Max Phantasm into that uh, Dragapult. Parting Shot coming out into the Ndidi. You tend to not really care that much about getting stat drops on your Ndidi. But let's see what goes down. What is Gemma gonna switch into with this Parting Shot? She's got options, Togekiss, Boongus, who knows? Potentially leaving a redirection, uh, not leading with redirection, may have been a bit of a step back, but we'll see what happens. All right, so here comes the Max Phantasm, definitely into Dragapult, and that thing is gone. Yeah, it's not going to survive. So Dragapult's gone. Very interesting. We don't know what uh, Rosie has in the bag. 
Jim still has Dynamax on the table, though, uh, which, based on what she has on the rest of her team, is probably going to be the Togekiss. Let's see. Okay, we got a Moongus coming out. Uh, I don't think... Uh, I don't think Rozzy had any anti-sleep precautions on their team, so this is probably going to be a double up into it. Maybe Ndidi has safeguard. That is potentially something like that could happen. Um, but getting spored, obviously not something you want to happen. So let's see how Rozzy combats this. So we're seeing the Dynamax coming out from Gemma. It's going to be Togekiss getting big gonna do the little feet kick that it does when it dynamaxes celebratorily yeah it's so excited to be here it's just having a good time we're all having a good time we're all friends again i'm going crazy doing this by myself max airstream can get you a nice solid speed boost for something like the air she flew in the back wow poltergeist takes that way better than i thought it would that was super cool uh Max speed boost onto Amoongus. I don't think that's going to give it to Sport. Yep, safeguard. Nice. Good stuff. And then Max Phantasm, presumably onto the Togekiss. Let's see how much that does. It's solid damage. It's good. Uh, it's not a two hit KO, unfortunately. And unlike Dragapult, who's a physical attacker sometimes, another fact Max Phantasm is not going to do more. It's going to do the same amount. But on the plus side, it doesn't look like the Airstream did that much. And now Amoongus is not useless. It can still redirect things, so you don't want your Togekiss getting hit. I think that with the defense drops that he's getting, indeed, uh, Razi's going to want to keep that DD on the field as long as possible so that you're not end up taking like a max uh, Starfall or a max Airstream onto your Shifu. Just my opinion here. So here comes another max airstream. Uh, unless it gets a crit, it shouldn't KO. Yeah, it doesn't KO. Indeed, he stays strong. Uh, whatever Pulse Geist did is going to be redirected to this Amoongus, who is now plus two speed. Ooh, a recovery berry. Very nice. We've only seen Indeed get one shot, so <laughs> this is new information. And then Max Phantasm coming out. Going to get a defense drop onto Amoongus. Uh, it's pretty specially bulky, so it's not going to do that much. I really think that Rosie needs to make sure that that toke, or that that uh, indeed he stays in the fight as long as possible. You do not want if her Shifu is in the back. It could be Snorlax. It could be Kinkelder. We actually don't know. You do not want her Shifu or Kinkelder taking big hits from Togekiss. But minus two defense is really really solid. I'm just realizing that like. Uh, Rozzy could have both Clefairy and like either Kelda or Shifu in the back, so maybe not looking too bad for Rozzy. Um, so what do you do? Obviously, I I see no problem in going for another going for another speed boost. Maybe you want to change the terrain. Uh, that could be very helpful for you in the long run. Psychic terrain's annoying, especially if you have fake out pressure in the back. Yeah, Rozzy just going for another follow me. Doesn't want Pulte guys to go down yet. Ooh. Will it shell smash though? Indeedy. Yep, there. That looks like a crit to me. So Indeedy's gonna go down. Yep. It's gonna allow this Amoongus to uh, presumably go for a sludge bomb. It can't spore. I mean, I guess Jimma could have hit the spore button, but it would not have been a productive use. Here comes the shell smash. So it looks like the airstream was the right play from Gemma. Getting her Togekiss up to plus three in speed is going to allow it to still be the fastest thing on the field. Sludge Bomb coming out. The White Herb was already... Oh, okay, that did nothing. I thought, oh yeah, it goes resist poison. We're fine. We're chilling. We're having a good time. So, Pulte Guys has Strength Sap, Shadow Ball, Shell Smash, and Baton Pass. So, I'd say... Follow me, Shadow Ball seems solid. Uh, Dazzling Gleam's gonna hurt though. It, it, it looks like Rozzy just kind of lost the speed war there. And this Clefairy, while providing a friend guard, I don't know how helpful it's gonna be. Dazzling Gleam comes out, doesn't get the crit on Pulte, guys, it looks like. There's a crit onto Clefairy. Shadow Ball coming out. Is this into Togekiss? 
It is, but it's not quite enough. Special defense drop, that's very nice. Sludge Bomb into the Clefairy. Oh, that gets the knockout. Unfortunate. Psychic Terrain is gone with Ndidi not around. Not that big of a deal, although Incineroar does carry actual fake out pressure now. Togekiss looking real low. It's her Shifu in the back. Oh. I. Hmm. I think what needs to happen is that Gemma needs to crit both of these Dazzling Gleams. I can't remember exactly how much it did to the Poltergeist, but it looks like um, it needs a crit to, uh, to get the KO this turn. Yet, yeah, unfortunately, Shell Smash did not uh, make Poltergeist faster because of Aqua Jet! Oh, but it gets redirected! Unfortunate. Okay, if Urshifu survives this turn, and... Oh, yeah. The crit on Poltergeist is going to seal this game up. Yeah. Uh, you... Yeah. There's just too much... Like, you can just Sludge Bomb and Dazzling Gleam here, and or Rage Powder and Dazzling Gleam. Like, I don't, or Shifu doesn't have any spread moves. It's also slower. Yeah. Oh, man. Razi, beautiful team. I loved it. Great fighting. Great playing from Gemma. Airstream was definitely the right call. Don't listen to me about changing terrain. Great stuff all around. GG's to both of our players. That was awesome, awesome stuff. I greatly enjoyed watching it, and I hope that the chat enjoyed watching it as well. Hey, you like that video? We think you should check this out. And YouTube thinks you should check this one out. Be sure to subscribe for more content.